He said, Behold, think not of the former. I will do a new thing. Beginning from today, watch out, you have entered the era of new things. It doesn't matter what you look like now, what is happening around now. What is happening cannot stop what has been ordained. Watch out from today, new things will begin to take place for you. New doors of favor will begin to open for you. New doors of help will open for you. New doors of progress will open for you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Because God is not a liar, your frustration they begin to expire. Amen. Every delay and setback you have suffered today mark their end. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Because God has ordained a new beginning for you from today. I decree, let there be a change in the tide of events in your life. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Whatever look like a siege of wickedness, by the fire of God, let them be swallowed up. In the name of Jesus Christ. When it is the era of new things, laughter starts. I pray for you from today, laughter starts for you. Scripture says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Because it's your era of new beginning, watch out new levels of laughter for you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. It shall be well with you. In this season of new beginning, you will not beg bread. You will not eat the bread of sorrow. You will not eat the bread of pity. You will not eat the bread of languishing. The God of Oyedepo will satisfy you early. The lines will fall for you in pleasant places. If you are saying amen, say better amen. In this phase of your life, new helpers will emerge for you. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Tell your neighbor, welcome to your era of new beginning. Put those hands together for the Lord and please take your seat. Praise God. New beginning. New beginning. I say new beginning. I say new beginning. You may not look like it's new beginning. When God said it, watch out, the lines will begin to fall in place for you. The psalmist said, the lines are falling for me in pleasant places. New beginning. New beginning. When God said, we do a new thing, he has already finished the new thing. So all you are taking delivery is what has already been prepared. It doesn't matter whether your head agree with it or not. Because God has said it, that's how it will be working for you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. I, remember, I just remember now when Ibiomi told me that day when I visited him, he said, watch out. The blessings of 10 years, God will give it to you in 10 weeks. To me, it's like, eh? He said, waiting. I was wondering. He said, I know. You are wondering whether it will come to pass or not. Watch out if I'm a prophet. I said, I don't doubt you. I'm just trying to imagine myself blessings of 10 years. And before we know what is happening, I just came back. Before we know what is happening, what I've never seen before, opportunities that have never come before, helpers that have never come before, they began to emerge. They hear me and hear me well. You will see what you have never seen before. You will carry favor that you have never carried before. You will see blessings you have never seen before. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Be reminded that our week of spiritual emphasis for the month of August 2018, it got to a point the Korean government threatened Young Cho. He replied the government. If in 48 hours you don't reverse that decision, 
I will ask all my members to withdraw all their money from your bank. Because 80% of the economy of South Korea is in the church. So immediately he issued them that warning. They reversed it in less than one hour. The church is in power. The church is in power. If you don't reverse it, I tell my members to withdraw their money from every of your distance. Let's see how, how powerful your central bank is. In less than one hour, they change the decision. Eighty percent of the economy of South Korea is in Seoul Olympic Church. That's where the economy is. The economy is in the church. So they were now asking him, okay, how do you want us to do it? And I asked his men, go and define the law. <laughs> Scripture says, out of Zion shall go for the law. And the word of the Lord from what? Jerusalem. Jesus is coming for a reigning church. Reigning in power. Spiritual power, economic power. Mental power. I want you to hear this. The authority of God is domiciled in the church. The power of God is domiciled in the church. Meaning the church can decide the destiny of the nation. Whether you like agree, you like no agree. This is not PDP matter. This is not APC matter. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Likewise, I'd like you to understand again that supernatural breakthrough will become the identity of the end time church that Jesus is coming for. Meaning you will not be breaking through in the energy of the flesh. But you will be breaking through by the might of the spirit. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So every good thing that will be coming to pass in your life, they are a reflection of the acts of God. The acts of God. And when this become your identity, everyone that see you, they will say, let me follow you. The way things are happening for you, it is not normal. You will get your testimony. No one that scripture say, ten shall follow one that is a Jew and say, let's go and serve your God. Let's go and serve your God. Now, has it happened in your life? There are people you have not preached to. They just choose to follow you to go and serve your God. Has it happened to anyone here? Has it happened to anyone here? If it has not happened to you, check your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes, what did I say? There are many. I didn't open my mouth and say, be born again. No, I didn't. Just by reason of the manifestation of grace, manifestation of the blessings of God, the desire to follow and serve my kind of God. There are many gods, so, but there is one almighty God. People will follow you and serve your God. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. But for these identities to reflect in your life, there is one quality lifestyle that must be traced to you, which we call kingdom addiction. Kingdom 
term addiction is a product of dedication. When you are dedicated, gradually you become a kingdom addict. Let me explain what an addict looks like. Within our neighborhoods, we must have seen smokers. Am I correct? There are smokers going to the toilet, they carry cigarettes. Entering the bedroom, they carry cigarettes. Have you seen such people before? There may not be money for food, but there will be money for cigarettes. That is high level addiction. An addict does not see anything wrong with what he's doing. Why? Because his spirit, soul, and body is going after the thing. An addict. When you are dedicated to a particular cause, your addiction does not have an equal. Nothing matters to you other than what you are addicted to. Why? You have dedicated yourself to it. But I want you to hear this this morning. Until you give God his place by dedication, you may never have your place in life. When God has his place in your heart, then you are bound to take your place on the earth. When God has his place in your heart, you are bound to have your place on the earth. The place you give to God in your heart now, determines the place you occupy on the earth. You can't occupy big blessing if you have not given him the place. It is the place you give God that determines the place you occupy. Kingdom addicts enjoy inexplainable blessings and liftings from God. Kingdom addicts. So if you are not enjoying inexplainable blessings, inexplainable favor, inexplainable opportunity, ask yourself, am I a kingdom addict? Am I a kingdom addict? First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. This is a true saying if a man desire the office of a bishop he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless a husband of one wife vigilant, sober of good behavior given to hospitality apt to teach the next verse now not given to wine no striker, left wing striker, <laughs> right wing striker, not greedy or filthy laws, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. Now, are you hearing it now? These are the price you must pay. <laughs> if you are dedicated, you must pay a price. Say with me, I must pay a price. There are some bishops that drink beer. Gouda. 
big stout and malt. There are bishops that drink beer. If you have not seen me, I've seen one. <laughs> when you when you when you confront them, they say scripture say, take a little wine for your stomach. The day he told me that, I now asked him, did you have the sickness of that man? You, do you have the sickness of the man? They say, take a little wine. He was trying to defend himself. But he said, we'll talk about it. But he didn't give me any chance to talk about it again. There are some members that still drink beer. Drink where? Be drinking. That's how your children will be drinking. Daddy, let me drink small. From you, you have trained them how to be drinking beer. So by the time they begin to buy a bottle of beer, if you flog them, you have sinned against God. Yes. Because you gave them to drink. Is he only drinking beer? There are guests that drink beer more than men now. We call them broken bottle. After drinking, they will tell you nothing they happen. Nothing they happen. May the Lord have mercy on you. If you are addicted to drinking beer now as a woman, Imagine the kind of children you will raise. Which means they will be drinking cartons of beer. Because scripture says, these works that I do, greater than this. So if you are drinking three, four bottles, your children will be drinking cartons. <laughs> oh, you don't know? You better know now. Oh, you don't know the scripture, huh? Let me shock you. David, a man after God's heart, he went and collected Uriah's wife. He repented, though. But when Solomon came, what did Solomon do? How many solo get? Solo had 300 wives and 700 concubines. So whatever you are doing now, you are preparing your children. We don't only transfer financial legacy to them. You also transfer spiritual liabilities to them. Somebody is angry. But whether your face is squeezing or not, I will still say it. So if you are a left wing striker or right wing striker, let it die today. In this covenant day of new beginning, all things must pass away. You must destroy that habit before it destroys your life. If you like, say amen. Somebody say, how will I leave him? Who will pay my school fees? Let him go so that God can come. If he doesn't go, God will not come. And the more you continue in it, the more you continue in bondage. You will be living in that torture. Are you hearing me? You'll be living in that torture. Satan will be using it to torture you. Torture you. Do you know some people don't have money to give to their family, but they have money to give to their girlfriends? Mumu. <laughs> There's no money. There's no money. But when he sees his girlfriend, cash is coming. Cash is coming. Cash is coming. Don't worry. I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. Witchcraft, nine to you. What did your father is about to do you now? Somebody is angry. I don't, why am I even going this direction? 
It's like someone must be bailed out today. Whatever force that kept you in that condition, the yoke is broken now. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Even if the woman chained you with her charm, I decree let the charm scatter. In the name of Jesus Christ. This generation is trying to modernize dedication. You can't reinvent the ancient landmark. It is not possible. Now in your village, can you remove the boundaries? It's not done. There is no new modern way of dedication. It is still the old way. <laughs> Seek ye of the old paths. <laughs> and walk ye in it. And the people will say, no, we shall not walk ye in it. No. There is no new modern way to be dedicated to God. There is no new modern way to be committed to the things of God. It has always been the same old legacy that was transferred to us by our father. Papa made a very classic example that some people think now that it's a sign of riches that you are blessed. That instead of giving their children Bible, now they are giving their children iPad. I'm not saying it is wrong for them to grow in technology. But hear me. You either start showing them the way of the Lord now or you will cry tomorrow. This is one of the major concerns in America now. The founders fathers of America founded it on God. In God we trust. In prayer, in everything. Now, phone, iPad is replacing everything. So instead of uh, reading the Bible now, what they are doing regularly is now watching pornography. That's how foolishly, because of lack of wisdom, they are now saying that in primary schools that they are free to kiss. Yes, in America. But there's nothing wrong with it. They are free to kiss. They are free to do romance. They are free to do anything. Because one foolish president came and said they should take away Bible from schools. And I know many of you now want to behave like Americans. Are from village, oh. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There is nothing too special to copy. Nothing too special. Many of you now want to feel like dressing like them. I might say low waist. Low waist is even small. What is mini? Open breast. Where did, where did our sisters copy wedding with open breast? Tell me. Tell me. You watched that wedding that took place two months ago. The royal wedding. No makeup. No single makeup. The lady covered her body gidiba. And everybody was watching from YouTube. It was on stream. Over 2 million people were watching one wedding. Shame on sisters. Oh. Some people will do wedding. If their breast, if the wedding gown 
does not show breast, it's like they are not doing the right thing. It's a sign that you don't even have anything called dedication. How much more fear of God? When dedication is out of place, you now become lovers of self than lovers of God. When dedication is out of place, you become more of lovers of self than lovers of God. And that's one of the main reasons why the psalm is described in the book of Psalms. It says, for we see not our signs. How can you see signs from God when you are not dedicated? Dedicated to God. You are now seeing signs. Who gave you the sign? Except it's a native doctor sign that you are looking for. There was a wedding they brought one in one of my station. The sister was pregnant. They brought the result that Saturday morning. Oh boy, our cow. Me, do that wedding. I will go look for the church. It won't be on my record and it won't be in my time. I disappear. I was invited to a wedding of a pastor. The result came that morning before I arrived. I was not the pastor of the station. I pastored the station before. The girl was pregnant. They were now asking me whether they should go ahead. I looked at the pastor. I said, if I slap you, your head will be correct. I say, no. There were two persons to wed. I said, this one should take place here, the other one should go. They were so shocked that I could take such a decision. I say, man, I value my head. Because if I do, it will be on record. What did I say? It will be on record. That they say it's Pastor Tony that said they should go ahead. Me? Say, if you do rubbish now, I'll just leave you and go. They had to go another place. So they went to organize all these uh, charge and bail pastors. Just like we have charge and bail lawyers. The pastor just collected his prophet offering. He said, put this a pass away. <laughs> That solemnization cannot take place on the altar. No. Go and show, bring your Bible and come and show me. The moment that one takes place, you are not due for a white wedding. What you are entitled is marriage blessing. We can bless you, but don't call for wedding. I know some sisters are not happy with me now. But whether you are happy or not, you must hear this truth. If you are a brother putting a sister under pressure that you must get belay before we marry, you are a winch. You are confirming the witchcraft of your father. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Uh, confirming the witchcraft of your father. Your papa don't give you witchcraft. So the one way you chop from your papa, now you want to transfer, give the girl. Okay? If you are here, any boy they tell you that one, run for your life. If you know if you wait, 
If the thing they do and jiggy 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 jiggy. <laughs> Tell her and say, wait, wait after the wedding. But if you know if you wait, you should go and look for another person. I told a brother, a sister this. Was he in Benin? The brother got angry. Say, which kind of pastor is giving you advice? That can hear your advice. I say, tell him to come if he's a man. You know, come to today. I told the sister, leave him, let him go. If God does not bring a man for you, I am not sent. One month pass, two months, three months, four months, five months. The mumu came back. What did I say? <laughs> he came back. Because his parents were not asking him, what did she do? What did she do? What did she do? He didn't want to talk. They now called her. I said, tell them what I said. He said, if he does not sleep with me, that he will not marry me. So, I told him what my pastor said, I should tell him, that he should go and look for another person. Guess what? The parents came to beg. Pastor, we stand where you stand. We stand where you stand. Forgive my son. I said, you should go and do fasting first. <laughs> well, I... I don't know how you feel, but I'm telling you the truth. He came now. He had to, to remove that evil spirit. Hear me. It's an evil spirit. Hear me. Any man that tells you sex before marriage, I bet you, after he has done it, you are not the last. You go to do others. Write it down. You will look for me one day. After he has finished with you, he will marry you, but you will get mates. Left wing, right wing. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> God will have mercy on you. Yeah. If there is any sister here that is in that trap, God has delivered you. Yeah. If you lose your love for God, you are bound to lose your honor. It is our love for God that fuels our addiction for the kingdom. David said, my heart and my affection is set towards the house of my God. If you lose your love for God, you will lose your honor, you will lose your blessings. You will lose favor with God and favor with man. What determines the favor we enjoy is the favor we get from God. When God favors you, man will favor you. If one man says he's no longer going to favor you, seven other doors are opening for you. Amen. Seven more better doors. Seven more better doors. That's why you must maintain your love for God. When your love for God is in place, your dedication for God is intact. It's intact. An addict to the kingdom is conscious of his time to meet with God. An addict to the kingdom is conscious of his money to satisfy the longing souls, the needy souls. Addiction is driven by a force. There is a force that drives addicts of this kingdom. They are driven by a force. But hear this. You can't be a kingdom addict without an unbroken focus. Their focus cannot be broken. There is something they have seen others can't see. And that is why they are 
grossly addicted pursuing it scripture says for the joy that was set before him he endured when you are addicted hear me you are paying a price because of where you want to reach I like the way Papa puts it. He says your addiction to the kingdom determines your addition to life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that the Gentiles do seek after shall be added. So your addiction determines your additions. Additions of favor. Additions of progress. So to be addicted is to be devoted or totally surrendered to the cause of the kingdom. To the point that people will notice as yeah, this one. Naim and God, oh, him and church. An addict is an extremist influenced by what he believes and what he is pursuing. When you are a kingdom addict, you live out your passion. What I mean by living out your passion, there are things you can't pretend with. Naturally, you exhibit it anywhere you go. The moment they mention that, they say, ah, if it's this, thing, it's this person you are talking about, we know him. He's an addict. He's an addict. If you are truly committed, truly dedicated, you don't need to say it. People will see it. People that are addicted, people that are dedicated, they don't mention it. Do you see that I'm addicted? No, you don't, you don't announce it. It does not require announcement. Paul said, you are the epistles that men read. you live out your passion it does not need announcement men will see it men will feel it like I said in the first service kingdom addicts are driven by sacrifice everyone is paying his price you must pay your price we are not paying our price equally. We are not paying it the same time. Why? Because you are not seeing what I'm seeing, so you cannot do what I am doing. If you pay my kind of price now, you may collapse. Why? It may weigh you down. If I pay a yet kind, kind of price now, I may collapse. But as we grow in dedication, it becomes easy. Why? God takes us in phases. Jesus said, if you are faithful in little, more shall be added to you. If you are dedicated little, you will be graduated to the next phase. As you show more dedication, you move to your next phase. And that is how doors begin to open for you. Doors open for you in that direction. Lastly, let's hear this. Jesus did not call just any kind of person. He called kingdom addicts. Everybody was available, but only kingdom addicts were called. Now, even in business, you call only serious-minded people. True or false? You don't just call anybody. Why is it that when you go for a job interview, 1,000 persons may apply, only five is choosing? Because they know that those five, they will give it all it takes. Why? It was well contested for. 
So they must make sure they maintain it and secure it. I'd like you to hear this. If you have been given a privilege to serve God, value it. Value it. If you have been given a privilege to serve God, treasure it. Don't feel that there is no one like you. Now, how many of us watched this World Cup that just finished? You watched the World Cup. You didn't watch World Cup. Spirit Coco. In the Croatian team, there was one young man called Nicholas. How many of us had the story of Nicholas? He felt it was too much. He didn't know that he was too less. Five minutes to the end of their first match, Nicholas was called to come and replace someone as a delay tactic. He felt insulted. Pride entered him and said, Me? How can I hold me? Go and play for just five minutes. He, said, he told coach, It's not going. It's not, I'm not going. It's just like in choir now. There are some people you call to come and do backup. I they see you from here. You call them to come and do backup. Some will say, ah, You tell me, say, you need to do backup. You will not sing till I leave the place. Till Jesus come. I they see you. Nicholas said he will not play for five minutes. The following day, they got his etiquette and sent him back to Croatia. Do you know why? He felt it was too much. Like some of you now feel that you are too much to serve God. Maybe to be in ushering unit or do one or the other. You are too much. Now whether you like it or not, the names of those Croatian players are written in gold. At least they played 2018 World Cup Finals. Even though they didn't win gold, they win silver. But did Nicholas carry silver? He carried shame. Shame will not be your portion. Now what he failed to do, someone else did it. And that person took the glory. Hear this. Whatever pride denies you of, someone's will, someone will take it from you. Someone will take it from you. Our dedication is not a must, it's a choice. God told Papa, the day you start messing up, I have nothing less than 100 persons that will replace you. Don't blame the man oh, for being too crazy with what he's doing. He has received a warning. He has received a yellow card before. The day you start messing up, I have nothing less than 100 persons Warming up to replace you. May nobody replace you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. May nobody replace you. Amen. May nobody take your place. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Lastly, before we rise up to pray, addiction brings you so where you are now called a friend of God. Jesus said, I no longer call you servants. I call you what? Friends. I don't call you servants. I call you what? Friends. If you must be addicted, you must be passionate in serving God. But let me say this. Whether you choose to be dedicated or addicted to serving God, you will serve something. You are either serving God or serving another thing. No wonder I said, choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the living God. Choose. Whether you choose God or you don't choose him, you will still choose something. Or something will choose you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes, when you become an addict, 
of the kingdom service, you now have a covenant part with God. You shall serve. I shall bless. That is an unlimited ticket to endless blessing. You shall serve. I shall bless. People that are serving with their hearts, they don't beg for blessing. They don't beg for promotion. They don't beg for lifting. And let me shock you. Was it on Friday? On Friday, I called one of our senior men. A pastor had a challenge somewhere. And he made some bad utterance. So someone called me on Thursday pleading that I should intervene. I should beg my boss. He's my boss. I served him in 2008. I should beg my boss so he can uh, mellow down the punishment. The punishment was sack. Was to be sacked. So I just quickly called him. He said, ah, oh, pastor. We talked for over 22 minutes. But he said something that shocked me. He said, where you are today, where you are today, it's not anointing that puts you there. Yes. He said, no, it's not anointing that puts you there. Your matter was brought up in National Council. Papa sat back watching. Bishop Abbe sat back and was watching. Everybody was saying the same thing about you. He said, maintain your good traits. Papa sat back. Bishop Abbe sat back. They was watching this person. They were saying, this person talk. All of them were saying the same thing. You can't finish me. It's not possible. You're black male. You know, get weight. If you're black male, get weight, bring them out. He said, you are not there because of anointing. You are there because you have been serving from your heart. And we know it. You have been following consistently. He said, that is what brought you to where you are. I'm begging you, serve from your heart. Don't do what you call eye service. If you fake it today, it will show tomorrow. Fake it, it will show. If you fake it, it will show. Where you place God today will determine where he will place you tomorrow. Make up your mind to serve God without any reservation. I guarantee you, see thou a man diligent in his business. Scripture says he shall stand before kings and not before me men. Rise up to your feet. In this covenant day of new dawn, every new beginning begins with a new approach. New approach. If you go casual, you will become a casualty. And I like the way Bishop Abiyah puts it. Your approach today delivers you from reproach tomorrow. You can't begin a new beginning with an old pattern. There must be a new attitude. It's just like someone that they just had a new baby. Do you know what? It's a new beginning. Do you know why I say it's a new beginning? They will be doing all night waking. The baby will sleep all day and be awake all night. True or false? As far as that baby is concerned, you can't change the pattern. Until after a month plus, the baby will begin to adjust. Am I correct? I hope I'm correct. It's a new beginning. Whether you like to sleep or you don't like to sleep or by midnight, the baby will be awake all day. Because the baby is still thinking, he's still in the stomach. Am I saying the truth? The baby will be awake all day. So you begin, to, you adjust for this new beginning to adapt yourself to handle the baby, the challenges. You are going to pray, Lord, in this new beginning, change my heart. Change my heart. 
you can't be you can't experience a new beginning with an old approach your prayer life must change your passion for god must change your dedication must change lord change my heart lord change my heart lift up your voice and talk to god lord change my heart you say you will take away the heart of out of stone heart of flesh and put in us a new spirit lord change my heart change my heart heal my heart of lukewarmness heal my heart of complacency heal my heart of passiveness lord heal my heart i rededicate my heart afresh in the name of jesus you say you will do a new thing whatever we make me miss this new event new experience of blessings new experience of favor lord heal my heart heal my heart heal my heart spirit of god let your fire search through my heart burn every chaff burn every chaff burn every chaff where a man's heart is that's where his treasures are lord heal my heart whatever is taking my heart away from dedication from making me solid dedicated to this assignment to this cause lord heal my heart in the name of jesus heal my heart let your fire burn every chaff burn every chaff heal my heart in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ you are here you are not born again or you want to rededicate your life back to god meaning you were once born again but unconsciously you lost your salvation there is another chance for you right now wherever you are inside and outside you want to make it right with jesus put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me lord jesus i come unto you today i know that i'm a sinner forgive me wash me with your precious blood i reject sin i reject satan come into my life be my lord and be my savior in jesus name i pray if you pray this prayer with me wherever you are Creating carry your bag and your bible and come quickly me. god bless